So, coming to the tongue, tongue is a conical muscular organ situated in the floor of the oral cavity. And uh, the functions, coming to the functions of the tongue, the tongue helps in speech and also it helps in mastication and it is an organ of taste and uh, tongue maintains a thermoregulation in lower animals by panting and also some tongue prints that means uh, the pattern of lingual papillae are useful for medical legal purposes for personal identification and it also import, it is also helps in mastication uh, so the, those are the um, uh, some functions of the tongue and coming to the presenting parts of the tongue so coming to the presenting parts of the tongue uh, tongue it is presents a tip base dorsal surface and inferior surface so tongue presents tip base dorsal surface and inferior surface coming to the tip of the tongue tip of the tongue it is directed forwards and is and it is in contact with the incisor teeth so tip of the tongue it is directed forwards and it is contact with the incisor teeth okay and uh, coming to the base of the tongue this is the base of the tongue okay so the base of the tongue it is connected to the epiglottis by median epiglottic fold and on either sides we have lateral epiglottic folds so the base of the tongue it is connected to the epiglottis by median epiglottic fold and and lateral epiglottic folds on either side of the lateral epiglottic folds we have depressions we have depressions we call these depressions as vallecula okay tip, tip it is directed forwards and it is in contact with the incisor teeth and coming to the base base of the tongue it is formed by the posterior one third of the tongue this is the posterior one third and this is the anterior two thirds posterior one third and anterior two thirds the base of the tongue it is formed by the posterior one third of the tongue and it is connected to the epiglottis by median epiglottic fold as well as lateral epiglottic folds so on either side of the lateral epiglottic fold there are some depressions we call them as vallecula and coming to the uh, dorsal surface so the dorsal surface of the tongue it is divided into anterior two thirds and posterior one third so anterior coming to the this is called a pre-circle part and here we see one sulcus terminalis is here this is the sulcus terminalis the limbs of the sulcus terminalis are directed forwards and laterally so this is sulcus terminalis the limbs of the sulcus terminalis are directed forwards and uh, laterally which divides the tongue into anterior two thirds and posterior one thirds the two limbs of the sulcus terminalis are at, are uh, situated here the two limbs of the sulcus terminalis uh, uh, they are come in contact with the depression we call it as foramen cecum so the two limbs of the sulcus terminalis they meet at a depression we call it as foramen cecum so foramen cecum uh, during embryonic life uh, from the so foramen cecum thyroglossal duct descends which gives rise to thyroid gland okay so coming to the anterior two thirds of the tongue anterior two thirds of the tongue it is covered by mucous membrane and uh, it is adherent to the muscle layer by lamina propria and we can see in the anterior two thirds of the tongue we can see uh, numerous papillae these papillae are nothing but the projections of the lamina propria into the epithelium so these papillae they are the projections of lamina propria into the epithelium there are four varieties of papillae first one is circumvallate papillae they are situated in front of the sulcus terminalis these are circumvallate papillae they are 8 to 12 in number they are the large papillae they have a truncated uh, conical they are truncated in shape they are truncated in shape with broad base and um, uh, coming to the this circumvallate papillae consists of taste buds and uh, uh, next coming to the uh, foliar papillae they are situated at the lateral margins of the tongue just in front of the sulcus terminalis these are foliar papillae these foliar papillae they are uh, they are also uh, they are also contains taste buds and coming to this fungi form papillae this fungi form papillae they are situated at the lateral margins of the tongue
So you can see the you can see the papillae here. So these are the foliar papillae are nothing but the vertical mucus folds. They are situated in front of the circle stem nalis and the fungiform papillae they occupy the tip as well as the lateral margins of the tongue. These are fungiform papillae. And the remaining part of the tongue, the remaining part of the tongue consists of filiform papillae. These filiform papillae are lined by stratified keratinized squamous epithelium. Stratified squ keratinized squamous epithelium. Okay, that this because of this filiform papillae, the tongue is velvety in appearance. So that's about the anterior two thirds of the tongue. So the anterior two thirds of the tongue is covered by mucous membrane and it is ad adherent to the underlying muscle layer by lamina propria. And the lamina, we can see numerous papillae in the anterior two thirds of the tongue. These uh, numerous papillae are nothing but the projection of lamina propria into the epithelium. There are four varieties of papillae. One is Circumvallet papillae, they are situated in front of the circus stem nalis. The other one is foliate papillae, they are nothing but the vertical mucus force situated in, uh, along the lateral margins just in front of the circus stem nalis. And the fungiform papillae, they are situated along the lateral margins of the tongue and the tip of the tongue. And the filiform papillae, they occupy the remaining part, dorsal surface of the tongue. So that's about the papillae. These papillae consist of taste buds except filiform papillae. Filiform papillae doesn't contain taste buds and the remaining three papillae that is circumvallate, fungiform and foliar papillae they consist of taste buds. Okay coming to the structure of taste bud. Each taste bud consists of gustatory cell surrounded by surrounded by So, the coming to the structure of taste bud, the taste buds are spherical masses. They consist of gustatory cells surrounded by sheath cells and supporting cells. And these uh, taste buds, the cells of the taste buds, they open into a pore called gustatory pore, which opens into the epithelium. And the base of the cells, they receive efferent gustatory nerve fibers. These are efferent gustatory nerve fibers. Efferent gustatory nerve fibers. So the taste of the the shape of the taste bud is they are spherical masses surrounded by the center cell is the gustatory cell and they are surrounded by the supporting cells as well as the, as well as the sheath cells and they open into a pore called gustatory pore and the base of the cells they consist of afferent gustatory nerve fibers. So that is the structure of taste bud and coming to the inferior surface of the tongue. Sorry, coming to the post circle part of the tongue, that is posterior one third of the tongue. The posterior one third of the tongue consists of mucus and serous glands as well as lymphoid masses, nothing but lingual tonsils. The posterior one third of the tongue consists of the posterior one third of the tongue we consists of lingual tonsils. So anterior two thirds consists of papillae and posterior one third of the tongue consists of lingual tonsils. They are nothing but the mass of lymphoid tissues. Okay, and then coming to the uh, coming to the inferior surface of the tongue. Coming to the inferior surface of the tongue, the inferior surface of the tongue is connected to the floor of the mouth by lingua, by frenulum linguae. So the inferior surface of the tongue is connected to the floor of the mouth by mucus fold called frenulum linguae. On either side of the frenulum linguae, we can see other uh, folds called plica fimbriata. In between the frenulum linguae and plica fimbriata, we have lingual veins, profunda lingual veins are there. And at the base of, uh, and at the base of uh, frenulum linguae, you will able to see uh, the opening of the submandibular duct. 
and uh, on either side of uh, on either side of the frenulum lingua you will able to see the profunda lingual vein and uh, and if the frenulum lingua is short it really it uh, causes uh, tight tongue that that uh, really that causes the difficulty in speech so frenulum lingua it is a mucus force situated from the inferior surface of the tongue to the floor of the mouth and on either side of the frenulum lingua we have another force called plica fimbriata and between the frenulum lingua and plica fimbriata we have uh, lingual veins the profunda lingual veins are there and at the, at the base of the frenulum lingua we have sublingual papilla are there for, so through which the mandibular ducts opens into the oral cavity so that's about the inferior surface of the tongue and coming to the lateral margins of the tongue the lateral margins of the tongue they are covered by the mucous membrane and they in front of the, they are uh, with the lateral margins of the tongue they are connected to a mucus fold called palatoglossal lodge at the sulcus terminalis this palatoglossal lodge contains the contains the palatoglossal muscle. In which this is the palatopharyngeal arch. The in between the palatoglossal lodge and palatopharyngeal lodge, we have lingual tom, palate and tonsil is there. Okay, so that's about the lateral margins of the tongue. Okay, and coming to the root of the tongue. The root of the tongue it extends from the symphysis menti to the hard bone. So the root of the tongue it extends from the symphysis menti and the hard bone and it forms the floor of the oral cavity and it is formed by the lower fibers of genioglossus muscle. So that's about the root of the tongue. Okay so the tongue presents tip base, dorsal surface, inferior surface and lateral margins and also root. Coming to the tip of the tongue, it is directed forwards towards the incisor, incisor teeth and, it, and uh, coming to the base, base is formed by the posterior one third of the tongue and, is, and it is connected to the uh, glo uh, epiglottis by medium glossal epiglottic fold and lateral glossal epiglottic folds. And coming to the dorsal surface, dorsal surface divided into anterior two thirds and posterior one third. Anterior two thirds is consists of papillae and posterior one third consists of uh, uh, lingual tonsils and coming to the lateral margins of the tongue they are covered by the mucous membrane and um, they are attached to give size they are attached to palatoglossal arch and palatopharyngeal arch in between the palatoglossal and palatopharyngeal arch you know, we will see we will able to see the palatine tonsil and coming to the inferior surface of the tongue inferior surface of the tongue forms the floor of the oral cavity the frenulum lingua is a mucous fold which connects the inferior surface of tongue to the uh, floor of the oral cavity and in, on either side of the frenulum lingua you will able to see the another force called plica fimbriata in between the inferior surface in between the frenulum lingua and plica fimbriata you will see profunda lingua veins on the base of the frenulum lingua you will able to see the uh, sublingual papillae through which submandibular ducts opens and the root, uh, root of the tongue extends from the symphysis mente to the hard bone and it is um, forms the floor of the oral cavity and it is formed mostly by the lower fibers of the genioglossus muscle. So that's about the presenting part, that's about the presenting parts of the tongue and coming to the muscles of the tongue. So coming to the muscles of the tongue, the muscles of the tongue they divide into extrinsic and intrinsic muscles. So each half of the tongue is divided by a median fibrous septum. And coming to the extrinsic muscles of the tongue, extrinsic muscles of the tongue they are five in number: genioglossus, hyoglossus, chondroglossus, styloglossus, and palatoglossus. Coming to the genioglossus muscle, it is a fan-shaped muscle, and it arises from the greater conno and body of the hard bone it arises from the uh, sorry sorry it arises from the superior genial tubercles of the symphysis menti and coming to the uh, insertion the upper fibers the upper fibers of the muscle they are inserted into the hard bone and the intermediate fibers they continuous with the middle constrictor of pharynx and the low fibers they are attached to the tongue on a, they are attached to the Tongue. So the genioglossus muscle, it is a fan-shaped muscle. You, like, you can see the genioglossus muscle there. It is arises from the superior genio tubercles of the 
symphysis mentae, the upper fibers they are attached to the hyoid bone, intermediate fibers they are attached to, they are continuous with the fibers of the medial constrictor of pharynx and the lower fibers they are attached to the floor of the tongue. And coming to the actions of the xenoglossus, it helps in the protrusion of the tongue. It helps in protrusion of the tongue and makes the dorsal surface concave. And also the xenoglossus is considered as a safety muscle because it does not allow the tongue to fall backwards. So if, if the tongue fall backwards, what, what happens? It, it, uh, the, it causes the breathing obstruction. It causes obstruction while breathing. So xenoglossus is a safety muscle because it does not allow the tongue to fall backwards. So that's about the xenoglossus. And coming to the hyoglossus, hyoglossus it is a quadrilateral muscle arises from the superior cornu and also some part of the hyoid bone. It is attached to the lateral margins of the tongue between the styloglossus laterally and inferior longitudinal muscle medially and coming to the hyoglossus muscle relations, the lateral relations of the hyoglossus, the hyoglossus muscle it is covered by mylohyoid muscle and coming to the lateral relations it is related to styloglossus muscle, here is the styloglossus muscle, this is the styloglossus muscle, it extends from the tip of the styloid process to the sides of the tongue. Is off just here. How do you just say now? Okay, dear. You could work out a little bit of customer today. Is off just here. Off just here. Off just here. Coming to the high glosses muzzle, it is a quadrilateral muscle and it arises from the superior cano and uh, superior cano and body of the hyoid bone and it, uh, it is attached to the lateral margins of the tongue between the styloglossus laterally and inferior longitudinal muscle medially. Coming to the relations of the hyoglossus muscle, hyoglossus lateral relations, coming to the hyoglossus muscle lateral relation, it is covered by the mylohyoid muscle and it is related to styloglossus, it is related to styloglossus and it is also related to lingual artery, first part of lingual artery and it is related to lingual nerve. Lingual nerve, from the lingual nerve, submandibular ganglion descends by its two roots. Here is the submandibular ganglion and deep part of the submandibular duct and deep part of the submandibular gland and its duct and you can see the hypoglossal nerve, here is the hypoglossal nerve and from the hypoglossal, hypoglossal nerve it is uh, accompanied by a pair of vena committens. These are the lateral relations of the styloglossus muscle. The hyoglossus muscle, the coming to the lateral relations of the hyoglossus muscle, it is related to styloglossus muscle. The styloglossus muscle arises from the tip of the styloid process and inserted to the lateral margins of the tongue and it is the hyoglossus muscle, it is covered by mylohyoid and it is related to lingual nerve, it is related to hypoglossal nerve accompanied by a pair of vena committens and first part of lingual artery and also lingual nerve it is um, the submandibular ganglion is suspended by the lingual nerve by two rows submandibular gland along with its duct these are the later relations of the hyoglossus muscle and coming to the median relations of the hyoglossus muscle it is related to stylopharyngeus muscle so this is the stylopharyngeus muscle middle constrictor of pharynx and uh, first and second parts of lingual artery and uh, this is the middle constrictor of pharynx. This stylopharyngeus muscle, it is accompanied by glossopharyngeal nerve. This is the glossopharyngeal nerve. These are the medial relations, inferior longitudinal muscle also. These are the medial relations of the high glossus muscle. So coming to the high glossus muscle again, it is a quadrilateral muscle and uh, it, uh, it arises from the superior cornu and body of the hard bone. So this is the hard bone. It arises from the superior cornu and some part of the body of the hard bone and it is covered by mylohyoid muscle. This uh, high glossus muscle, it is covered by mylohyoid muscle and uh, coming to the relations of the high glossus muscle, it is related laterally to styloglossus. This styloglossus muscle arises from the tip of the styloid process and inserted into the lateral margins of the tongue as well as hypoglossal nerve. This is the hypoglossal nerve which is uh, along with the hypoglossal nerve, vena committents are there, two ways accompany the hypo hypoglossal nerve and first part of lingual artery is there and lingual nerve is there, lingual nerve. It, uh, it lingual now 
it turns it uh, medially it surrounds the submandibular duct and it opens into the and it uh, supplies the anterior two thirds of the tongue. Lingual nerve is it is from the lingual nerve the submandibular ganglion suspends by its two roots and uh, next is the uh, this is that's about the lateral relations of the uh, the higher glossus muscle and coming to the median relations of the higher glossus muscle it is consists of stylopharyngeus muscle and stylopharyngeus muscle along with the stylopharyngeus muscle uh, glossopharyngeal nerve is there and also middle constrictor of pharynx is there and also first and second parts of lingual artery these are the late median relations of the higher glossus muscle so and the function of the higher glossus muscle is it causes the depression of the tongue it causes it, it depresses the tongue and makes the uh, dorsal surface convex so that's about the higher glossal muscle and coming to the chondroglossus muscle chondroglossus muscle it is nothing but the continuation of the higher glossus muscle separated by a genioglossus muscle it is it arises from the lesser corner of the higher bone chondroglossus muscle is a small muscle and and coming to the uh, other muscle that is uh, uh, palatoglossus muscle. Palatoglossus muscle arises from the palatine aponeurosis. Palatoglossus muscle arises from the palatine aponeurosis and is also inserted into the lateral margins of the tongue. The function of the palatoglossal muscle is to raise the base of the tongue, thus closing the oropharyngeal isthmus. And next muscle is the stylogloss muscle. Stylogloss muscle arises from the tip of the stylite process and is inserted into the lateral margins of the tongue and uh, some fibers of the stylogloss muscle they are continuous with the high glossus muscle and the function of the uh, stylogloss muscle is to it is antagonistic to the action of the genioglossus muscle it causes the detracts the tongue backward it retracts the tongue backward so that is the function of the stylogloss muscle so the extensing muscles of the tongue they are uh, they are five in number on either side they are five in number coming to the first muscle that is genioglossa it is a fan shaped muscle it arises from it arises from the superior genial tubercles of symphysis mentae lower fibers they are attached to the hard bone and intermediate fibers they are continuous with the fibers of the middle constrictors and low fibers they are attached to the root of the tongue and uh, coming to the uh, actions of the genioglossus muscle it causes the protrusion of the tongue and this muscle is con considered as the safety muscle of the tongue because it does not allow the tongue to fall backwards thus uh, we, the tongue fall backwards it causes breathing obstruction so it does not allow the tongue to fall backwards so now that's about the genioglossus muscle and coming to the higher glossus muscle higher glossus muscle is a quadrilateral muscle and it is uh, arises from the greater corno and body of the heart bone and it is attached to the lateral margins of the tongue between stylogloss lateral and inferior longitudinal muscle medially coming to the later relations of the later relations of the high glossus muscle it is related to uh, mylohyoid muscle stylogloss and also it is related to deep submandibular uh, deep part of submandibular duct uh, gland and its duct lingual nerve lingual from the lingual nerve submandibular ganglion suspended by two roots the lingual nerve winds from the submandibular duct from lateral to medial side and it supplies the anterior two thirds of the tongue and also the hypoglossal nerve supplies the muscles of the tongue is surrounded by a pair of vena committens these are the lateral relations of the high glossus muscle coming to the medial relations of the high glossus muscle stylopharyngeus muscle uh, is there stylo mandibular ligament is there and also stylo hyoid ligament is there and also glossopharyngeal now glossopharyngeal now it, um, it it supplies the posterior two thirds posterior two thirds posterior to one third of the tongue and uh, that's above the high glossus muscle and chondroglossus muscle it is nothing but a detached part of high glossus muscle separated by genioglossus it arises from the lesser corno of the hard bone and coming to the stylogloss muscle stylogloss muscle arises from the tip of the stylite process and it is inserted to the lateral margins of the uh, lateral margins of the tongue and some fibers they are continuous with the higher glosses and uh, it, it is antagonistic in the action compared to genioglossus muscle the because the genioglossus muscle it protrudes the tongue the higher glosses muscle it uh, sorry the higher glosses muscle uh, sorry the stylogloss muscle it uh, detracts the tongue backwards and coming to the uh, palatoglossus muscle it arises from the palatine aponeurosis and it is attached to the sides of the tongue and the palatoglossus muscle it elevates the base of the tongue that's closing the oropharyngeal isthmus so that's about the extensive muscles of the tongue and coming to the 
intrinsic muscles of the tongue they are the intrinsic muscles of the tongue they are also it's they are situated on either side of the median fibrous septum they are superior longitudinal inferior longitudinal transverse lingua and verticalis lingua superior longitudinal muscle it arises from the posterior part of the median fibrous septum and it is inserted to the sides of the tongue and uh, it makes the it uh, shortens the uh, tongue and makes the uh, dorsal surface concave and uh, short and coming to the inferior longitudinal it reduces the length of the tongue and makes the inferior surface concave. Coming to the inferior longitudinal margin, inferior longitudinal margin is arises uh, uh, from the lateral margins of the tongue and it is inserted to the anterior part of the median septum. It, it shortens the tongue and meet and makes the dorsal surface convex and coming to the transverse lingua, the transverse lingua uh, arises from the median fibrous septum that uh, the fibers pass laterally and inserted to the side of the tongue and coming to the verticalis lingua verticalis lingua it arises from the dose uh, it, it arises from the dosum of the tongue and, and it is also inserted to the lateral margins of the tongue so and uh, coming to the uh, uh, transverse lingua it uh, decreases the width of the mouth and coming to the verticalis lingua it, it increases the width of the tongue so that's about the intrinsic muscles. Superior longitudinal muscle arises from the posterior part of medium fibrous septum and it inserted to the lateral margins of the tongue. Posterior part of the medium fibrous septum. Here, medium fibrous septum is there. So superior longitudinal muscle arises from the posterior part of the medium fibrous septum and inserted to the lateral margins of the tongue. Okay, and coming to the and inferior longitudinal muscle, inferior longitudinal muscle arises from the lateral margins of the tongue and is inserted to the anterior part of the median fibrous septum. And uh, superior longitudinal muscle, it causes, it, uh, uh, it lessens the length of the tongue and makes the dorsal surface concave. Inferior longitudinal muscle, it uh, shortens the tongue and makes the dorsal surface convex. And coming to the transverse lingua, it arises on either side of the it arises on either side of the median fibrous septum and it is attached to the lateral margin of the tongue and this and it in, uh, and it causes it it shortens the width, width of the tongue and it make and it allows the narrowing of the length of the tongue and coming to the uh, and coming to the verticalis lingua, verticalis lingua it is arises from the dorsal surface of the tongue and it is attached to the lateral margins of the tongue and it uh, causes uh, it increases the width of the tongue. Verticalis lingua it uh, decreases the width of the tongue and uh, transverse lingua it decreases the width of the tongue and verticalis lingua it increases the width of the tongue. That's about the intrinsic muscles of the tongue. And coming to the and coming to the blood supply of the tongue, nerve supply of the tongue, so the motor supply, it is divided into somatomotor, secretomotor and vasomotor. The somatomotor nerve supply, that means all the muscles of the tongue except palatoglossus, they are supplied by the hypoglossal nerve, where palatoglossus is supplied by the cranial part of accessory nerve. And coming to the... Into the nerve supply of the tongue, the nerve supply of the tongue it is subdivided into somatomotor, secretomotor, and vasomotor. Somatomotor nerve supply of the tongue that means all the muscles of the tongue they are supplied by the hypoglossal nerve except palatoglossus which is supplied by the cranial part of accessory nerve. And coming to the so secretomotor nerve supply, the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers they reach the uh, gland they reach the tongue by superior salivatory nucleus from the superior salivatory nucleus facial nerve cauda tympani branch of facial nerve and lingual nerve and from that lingual nerve they relay in the submandibular ganglion from the submandibular ganglion the post ganglionic parasympathetic fibers they reach the tongue through the lingual nerve so the pre ganglionic parasympathetic fibers they from arises from the superior salivatory nucleus and they reach the gland through facial nerve Corda tympani, lingual nerve, and they relay in the submandibular ganglion. Again, the postganglionic parasympathetic fibers they reach the tongue through the lingual nerve. And coming to the sympathetic uh, innovation, the sympathetic fibers they reach the gland by forming plexus around the internal carotid artery. And coming to the vasomotor, vasomotor nerve supply of the tongue is also carried out by the sympathetic nerves. And coming to the sensory. 
sensory supply of the nerve. The sensory supply of the nerve it is different from for the anterior two thirds and posterior one third. Anterior two thirds of the tongue, the taste sensation by the cauda tympani nerve and general sensation by the lingual nerve. Taste sensation cauda tympani nerve is a branch of facial nerve and lingual nerve. Lingual nerve is a branch of mandibular nerve and the posterior one third of the tongue, the both general sensation and taste sensation by the glossopharyngeal nerve and the posterior most part of the tongue the posterior most part of the tongue it is supplied by the it is supplied by the vagus nerve superior laryngeal branch of vagus nerve that's about the sensory supply of the tongue so coming to the nerve supply of the tongue motor supply and sensory supply motor supply there it is, it is divided into three uh, somatomotor, secretomotor and vasomotor. Somatomotor nerve supply of the tongue, it is by the hypoglossal nerve, supply all muscles of the tongue except uh, palatoglossal which is supplied by the cranial part of accessory nerve and coming to the secretomotor nerve supply, the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers, they reach the tongue from the superior salivary nucleus, facial nerve, cauda tympani, lingual and from the lingual nerve, they, they, the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers they relay in the submandibular ganglion, and from the submandibular ganglion, the postganglionic parasympathetic fibers they reach the gland to the lingual nerve. And coming to the uh, uh, sympathetic innovation, sympathetic innovation by the uh, lingual, they form plexuses. The sympathetic uh, postganglionic sympathetic fibers they form plexuses around the lingual artery. We, we know that see, the sympathetic uh, pre-ganglionic sympathetic fibers they relay in the superior cervical ganglion and the post-ganglionic sympathetic fibers they reach the tongue by forming plexuses in the around the lingual artery and coming to the sensory nerve supply of the tongue the anterior two thirds of the tongue is supplied by cauda tympani nerve the taste sensation is supplied by cauda tympani nerve which is a branch of facial nerve and the general sensation by the lingual nerve and posterior one third of the tongue it is supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve both general and taste and posterior most of the posterior most part of the tongue behind the valicula behind the valicula posterior most part of the tongue it is supplied by the superior laryngeal branch of vagus nerve so that's about the nerve supply of the tongue and coming to the blood supply of the tongue the blood supply of the tongue it is by the uh, main artery that is the lingual artery lingual artery is a branch of the external carotid artery and palatine and tonsillar branches of the facial artery which is also a facial artery is also a branch of external carotid artery and ascending pharyngeal artery which is also a branch of external carotid artery so the main artery is the lingual artery lingual artery it is a branch of external carotid and the remaining branches are small that is palatine and tonsillar branches of the facial artery which is a branch which is in is a branch of external carotid artery and ascending pharyngeal artery which is intern is a branch of external carotid artery and coming to the venous drainage the venous the, the veins of the tongue they drain in, they divide into two sets superficial and deep uh, veins superficial veins they drain uh, they drain the tip and inferior surface of the tongue and they drain into internal jugular vein and the deep veins uh, they drain the dorsum of the tongue uh, and also lateral sides of the tongue and uh, they drain into uh, internal jugular vein and coming to the lymphatic drainage the the lymphatic drainage is divided into four sets apical set marginal set central set and dorsal set apical set the lymph flow from the apical set the lymph nodes they drain the tip of the tongue uh, into uh, jugular diagnostic and jugular omohyoid group of lymph nodes and some into submandibular group of lymph nodes also and the marginal sets they drain the lateral margins of the tongue they also drain into jugular diagnostic and jugular omohyoid and apical um, and central set there is uh, they drain the dorsal surface of the tongue from into jugulo diagnostic into jugulo homo hair and also um, and also marginal set marginal set they central part central part also they drain the um, they drain the uh, central part of the tongue into jugulo diagnostic and jugulo homo hair group of lymph nodes so all the lymphatics of the tongue they drain into jugulo diagnostic and jugulo homo hair group of lymph nodes and sometimes they drain into submandibular group of lymph nodes also so that's about the blood supply of the tongue so the blood supply of the tongue it is about it is by the lingual artery the main artery is the lingual artery which is a branch of external carotid and palatine and tonsillar branches of the facial artery ascending pharyngeal artery and venous drainage into the veins of the um, 
drain the veins of the tongue drains uh, into two sets divides into two sets superficial sets and uh, deep sets the superficial veins drain into internal jugular veins which drains the tip and frenulum of the tongue and coming to the deep veins they deep veins they uh, drain uh, they drain the dorsum of the tongue and they also drain into the internal jugular vein and coming to the lymphatic drainage the trunk the lymphatic drainage divides into four sets apical marginal central and dorsal apical set drains the tip of the tongue and marginal set uh, drains the later um, lateral margins of the tongue and also central part of the tongue which central part means it drains the tongue just in front of the sulcum terminalis the part which is present in just in front of the sulcus terminalis and dorsal set it drains the dorsum of the tongue all these sets they drain into jugular diagnostic and jugular omohyoid group of lymph nodes and also submandibular group of lymph nodes so that's about the tongue